So today we're continuing to talk about personal narrative and we're looking at the climax. And the climax is kind of the high point of your story. So you're going to be thinking about what's the high point of your story and then you're going to be thinking about what steps lead to the climax of your story. Okay, and you can list them below and draw some pictures. So, the moment we've all been waiting for, I have continued my story, all right, about my cat in Japan, okay, and as you know, I've read you the setting, and then I read you the conflict in the story, okay, and we're going to be continuing the story today. I'm going to read you right through to the, con to the conflict, to, to the climax, and you're going to see, you're going to see the choices that I face, and I, hopefully I'll leave you hanging on edge wondering how, what the resolution was, okay, wondering how it concludes, because that's the final piece of this. So we're almost there, guys. All right, so turn your listening ears on. I'm going to start right at the beginning. Here we go. It was a warm summer night in Moria City, Ibaraki Prefecture, Japan, in 2005. I had just gotten home from a busy day at work. Tired and hungry, I started to walk to the store to find some supper. I traveled down the quiet city streets where I could smell barbecue meat, vegetables, rice, and miso soup drifting out kitchen windows everywhere. I wondered what I would eat. Lost in my own thoughts, I heard something crying. I looked down to see a tiny white kitten with black spots. He looked like a cow kitty. He leapt up into my arms and nuzzled into my armpit. So that was my setting. Here we go into my uh, conflict. I stroked him and wondered who he belonged to. I looked around and saw many houses and empty backyards, no one in sight. I could hear dogs barking in the distance and people on bikes rushed by without looking at me. I felt lonely standing there and wondered if I could help this cat find a home. Nervously, I rang the doorbell where I found the kitten. I spoke into the intercom. I found someone's kitten. The curt answer, it's not mine left me sad and wondering what I should do next, and here we go. Okay, so I'm going to build it for you, build my story here so you can see, right up to the climax. I did what anyone with a big heart would do. I snuggled the kitten closer to me as I turned around and walked back toward my apartment. Sinking deeper in thought, I wondered what I would do with this new little life that now depended on me to keep him safe and warm. I brought him inside and gave him a warm blue blanket to rest in while I went back out to the store to get food. Walking through the aisles, I wondered what a little kitten would like to eat. I got him some tuna fish and milk. I also picked up some noodles and snacks for myself. When I got back to my apartment, my new kitten was waiting for me eagerly. He raised his tail and his raised tail and his high-pitched cry, I would soon learn, meant he was hungry. I fed him right away. After we had both eaten, we relaxed and snuggled into my bed for the night. He nestled into the warm blue blanket, and that would become his baby blanket. The next morning, I knew I had to begin a search for this little kitten's family. I asked everyone at my work. I asked around my neighborhood. I asked everyone I could find. No one seemed to know of a missing kitten, and no one seemed to want a kitten. My heart broke each time I heard, he's probably a throwaway. I was devastated that someone could throw away a kitten. Meanwhile, while I was searching, I was still taking care of him every day. I left him outside each morning when I went back to work, since I was not supposed to keep pets in my apartment. I named him Hikaru, meaning light. Incidentally, the neighborhood children playing with him daily had also named him Michan. With his tail in the air and a high-pitched cry, Hikaru eagerly, eagerly awaited my return from work every day. Trying to figure out what my options were, I realized I had very few. If I brought him to a shelter, he would be killed within a week, per Japanese animal shelter policy. If I brought him to an animal exchange at the park, I would have to bring him in a laundry net and then hope for the best. I could not imagine putting a tiny kitten in a net. My only other option, since I could not find him a home, was to keep him as my own pet. 
And that's where I'm leaving off for today. Are you wondering what happens next? Yeah, yeah so don't, let, don't talk out though because I'm still recording, okay? So the climax of your story should leave you, your reader, hanging. You should leave your reader wondering what's gonna happen next, okay? And I took a look, I took this organizer and I actually filled it in ahead of time so we could just, you could get an example of what some of the steps that I took were to build my climax, all right? And so the first one that I did, I made the high part of my story was when I realized the kitten had no home, okay? And I didn't know what to do, okay? That was kind of the, the high point of this, the climax of this. So some of the steps I did was I asked around the neighborhood if anyone had lost their kitten. I brought the kitten back to my apartment so he would be warm and fed for the night. I even still went to the store to get him tuna fish. I asked people at my work what I should do if I couldn't find a home for the kitten. They told me if I brought him to a shelter, he'd be put to sleep after seven days, and if I brought him to a pet exchange, I'd have to put him in a laundry net. <laughs> I continued to search and search for a home for the kitten. In the meantime, I'd named him, fed him daily, and he slept with me every night. He played with the neighborhood children during the day and eagerly awaited my return home from work in the evening. So those are the steps that I took to build my story for you guys to, to understand what happened in my story, but also to make you wonder what's gonna happen next, okay? And as you're building a story, you wanna keep your reader reading. You wanna keep your reader wondering, okay? And so you're gonna take a look at your stories today some of you may have already built some of your steps into a climax, but some of you are just going to start that today. Okay, and that's what we're gonna look at next.